Uh, we're, so we're talking about inverse functions and a few facts that we want to uh, identify. And the first fact is that the relationship between a function, we'll say f of x, and its inverse is that the domain and ranges switch. And what that means is if I had a table for f of x and it looks something like this, then the equivalent table for f prime of x, all of the values in the range become the domain and all of the values in the domain become the range. And so that's really a, a big relationship between a function and its inverse. The second thing that would be important graphically is that you know that something is a function if it can pass the vertical line test. And so the vertical line test is used to identify if something is a function. Now, in a similar way, we can use what's called the horizontal line test to decide if a function has an inverse. So for example, has an inverse that is also a function. So for example, x squared is a function. It passes the vertical line test. But it would not pass the horizontal line test. I can draw a horizontal line on the graph, and it will intersect the graph at more than one point. So its inverse is not a function. In fact, the inverse of this is a piecewise function. Right? So the inverse of, what, of x squared <coughs> is equal to the square root of x when x is greater than or equal to Take that back. It's the square root of x, and that will give you the top half of the graph. And it's also the second portion to get the bottom half of the graph is negative square root of x. It's the square root of x on the domain of f of x being greater than or equal to 0 and it's negative square root of x on the domain of f of x being less than zero. So we could restrict the function x squared and, and we could only look at say when x is greater than or equal to zero. So the graph of that would look something like this. This restricted form of x squared has an inverse that is a function. And some things to notice about the function x squared. In this case, it's always increasing. So we could say something like on an interval, on an open interval, if a function is continuous and increasing, then it has an inverse. And its inverse, in this case, happens to be the square root of x. In the same way, we could look at the function x squared and restrict it to being from x uh, when x is less than 0, or less than or equal to 0, if you, if you like. The graph would look like this. This would pass a horizontal line test. And so the inverse exists and is a function. And in this case, it is negative square root of x. With the big idea, or a big idea, is to notice that the function is continuous and decreasing. 
therefore it has an inverse. Right? If there's a change of a function to go from increasing to decreasing, then it won't pass the horizontal line test at that point. But we can look at things in pieces and see that it has an inverse. The last fact that's important for you to recognize is if I want to know the relationship between the tangents at related points. So let's say at the point on f of x, the point in question would be, I don't know, 1 comma 3. Let's say the slope or the value of the derivative at the point 1 comma 3, it happens to be 4. The related point on the inverse would be where the domain and range switch, so in this case 3 comma 1, and the value of the derivative of the inverse is the reciprocal. In this case it would be 1 fourth. And this is what the idea that um, is being communicated here. So technically, what is the derivative of the inverse of a function. It's always equal to 1 over the value of the derivative of the original function at the inverse's output. Let's look at an example to make sense of that before we stop. So we could be given a function f of x equals x squared plus 1. We know this is a quadratic. And we're only going to focus on x is greater than or equal to 0 so that it has an inverse. The inverse in this case is the square root of x minus 1. And we'd like to know some things about the slope of the inverse, or specifically, what is the value of the derivative of the inverse, we'll say at 5. So some things that are important. 5 is an input. I make my table, and this one is for the inverse over here. When 5 is an input in the inverse, that means it's an output in the original function. If I go back to my original function and ask the question, what value of x gets me 5? The answer is that x equals 2. And I'm not using negative 2 because of the domain restriction. Which means the output on the inverse would be 2, conversely. So I want to know, what's the value of the derivative at this point of the inverse? Well, what I can do is find one option is to find the value of the derivative of the function. In this case, it is 2x. And f prime of 2 is equal to 4. And this means that the value of the derivative of the inverse at 5 must be one-fourth by our theorem.